But for instance, this, this was the only place to put it. Yeah. Of course, on the ramp it was the heavy. They are located on bearings under the, uh, under the floor. But normally the chronology. People can see the object and can, uh, can have their own imagination about the reasons. But I think one must not see so, uh, so simply towards the object. I think perhaps one should ask about the imagination of the object or which line of intuition or inspiration lies in the uh, in what you call the density or sometimes the looseness of the thing. If you look towards the Rocky Mountains, the things are uh, extremely dense. Yeah. But it started not in this form, it started in a fluid form. This bastard relates to the reality of being born in a certain area and in certain circumstances. There is fat inside the tub, lying there like a molding or sculpting hand, the kind of hand which lies behind everything in the world. It represents creativity in an anthropological sense, a human sense, not just the creativity of artists. The stress here is on the meaning of the object, the solid, material thing invested with energy or spiritual nature. Antlers even more than horns show the deep mystery of the bloodstream flowing from the interior and continuing to circulate out on the head. The stag's antlers are the emanation of its entire venous, hormonal and nervous systems throughout a yearly cycle. They start to grow in early spring and are shed at the end of each year. For me, they relate to the inwardness of a feeling being the soul power, like blood in an artery, represented here by the hair's blood in tubes extended by long copper feelers or antennae. Perhaps in the earlier works there was more the, uh, the broader aspect of, of uh, tales. There was sometimes more uh, a narrative element in it or a mythological element in it where the figures uh, represent different powers. For instance, they appear animals, women, they appear some tools, uh, like crosses, you know, and uh, also small wooden sculptures and flexible stuff. This sculpture, Virgin, relates to women and female element in general. To express spiritual power and potential, I tend usually to use the female figure. This is because I believe in the female generally as possessing strengths in every field which have been underused in the past. I would characterize them as a greater openness to the possibilities of the future the basic ability to bear children, for instance, extends to many other areas of productivity where the male is more limited. If you consider male physiology, you will agree that the male is anatomically squarer. By comparison, the female is less petrified, less tied to the earth. Above the head of the figure is a square frame, a completely abstract element. This frame represents a balance toward the male, toward the cold, hard, crystallized, burnt out clinker that I would call the male intellect, the cause of much of our suffering. Well, I wouldn't call them uh, uh, symbols anymore. 
I would call them forms, simply forms, and uh, forms and substances, you know. You know, forms and the forms consist of a special constellation of substances, you know. For instance, this violin consists of iron, copper and cells. Yeah. How this uh, idea of a battery uh, uh, functions in his own imagination. special kind of, uh, of meaning of radiation of substances. Yeah. For instance, the leading uh, ability of the copper, so uh, almost the female character of the copper and the more martial character of the iron. And when they come together, they, they work as a battery, for instance. Yeah. And so it's a neutralizing factor of the, of the felt. Yeah, uh, at least a kind of, uh, of muffling character. Mm -hmm. To, uh, to to take it, Conducive. the sucker. Conducive. No, it works like a sucker like sometimes. A sponge. Yeah, a sponge. Yeah. You know, Absorbed. it contains, absorbs. Yeah. You know, yeah, fine. And you know, every etage represents a kind of big world in a way. Every layer. Every etage could mean a human kind's uh, geniality or personality. So you can work on, can go on in the object. It was in 1943. My Junkers 87 was hit by Russian anti aircraft fire and I crashed in a snowstorm in the Crimea, in the no man's land between the German and the Russian fronts. I was found in the wreckage by a clan of nomadic Tatars several days later. I had been completely buried in the snow. I remember voices saying, Voda, Voda, the word for water. Then the felt of the tents and the dense, pungent smell of cheese, fat and milk. They covered my body in fat to help it regenerate heat and wrapped it in felt as an insulator to keep the warmth in. My personal history is of interest only in so far as I have tried to use my life and myself as a tool. Our present stage of materialism and all the things we experience as negative in our present society has to be seen as an historical necessity, a crisis point that sets in at every stage of history and which we can observe in the past. I experienced it in the war. The positive aspect of this is the start of a new life. The whole thing is a therapeutic process. For me, it was a time when I first realized the part the artist can play in indicating the traumas of a time and initiating a healing process. By that I mean that I saw the relationship between the chaos I had experienced and the process of sculpture. Chaos can have a healing character if it is coupled with the idea of open movement to channel the warmth of chaotic energy into order or form. Through this theory, I began to see how structures could be created 
which relate to every kind of life and work. outward appearance of every object I make is the equivalent of some aspect of inner human life. The rubberized box here came out of a period of crisis and expresses my inner condition at the time. It expresses the need to create a space in the mind from which all disturbances are removed, an empty, insulated space. Within this empty space, investigations can take place. And from this concentration, new experiences can emerge. This is a prerequisite for every experiment with the theory of sculpture, the principle of the insulator. Each one of us has a creative potential which is hidden by competitiveness and success aggression. Environmental pollution advances parallel with the pollution of the world within us. And some species are Even now, not really exploited by their dimension, even not for me, because they are always still living in a kind of experiment, experimenting state, you know. So we'll come out perhaps next week another thing out of this arrangement in the laboratory, you know. Yeah.